A high school football coach is shot. A murder trial ends with guilty pleas and will take you to a drug race in Floyd County. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. A shooting this week in Mingo County sent a well-known sports figure and Pike County football coach to the hospital. EKB's Shelby Steele spoke with state police about the case. There are very few details surrounding the shooting in Red Jacket. However, EKB News has learned more information involving the case. The Mingo County Sheriff's Office responded to a call of gunshots being fired at a residence on Little Italy Camp Road near Mate 1 early Wednesday morning. Upon arrival, deputies discovered a man who was later determined to be the victim had already left the scene. Was able to drive himself to a local hospital here in Mingo County and was later transferred to another hospital. Pike County Athletic Director Ancy Casey confirmed to EKB News that Phelps High School football coach David Jones was shot in the abdomen. He visited the coach at Pikeville Medical Center and said Jones was in stable condition and is expected to recover from the gunshot wound. Police have a person of interest in the case, but the incident remains under investigation. There's still some uh, loose ends to tie up. The Mingo County Sheriff's Office is expected to finish the investigation today. Once completed, more information will be released. Reporting in Red Jacket, I'm Shelby Steele for EKB News. As of Friday, there were still no arrests in that early morning shooting Wednesday that sent Phelps football coach David Jones to the hospital. Mingo County prosecuting attorney Jonathan Duke Jewell tells EKB News that the reason for the delay is that investigators are still combing through evidence. Jewell says that evidence includes numerous, often conflicting witness statements. The complicating factor is there are numerous witnesses that needed to be interviewed, uh, the Sheriff's Department has interviewed, I believe, most, if not all, of the individuals who may have uh, some information regarding the incident that took place. And again, after our, my office receives uh, copies of the recorded interviews, we may have follow-up questions that need to be answered, things of that nature. In addition, we have someone who was shot, and there are medical records from at least two different hospitals in two different states. Of course, the records are not complete because the uh, individual who was shot uh, is still hospitalized. The investigation is still ongoing and, and we hope to make a decision within the next few days as to uh, how to proceed. Police say they do have a person of interest in the case, but they are not releasing that person's name while the investigation continues. EKB News will, of course, continue to follow this story and provide those updates as they are made available. The Floyd County Sheriff's Department and the Martin City Police Department continued their fight against the drug trafficking Wednesday night as they executed a search warrant on a suspected drug dealer at a Chestnut residence. Police say the suspect is a man who had been arrested for drug trafficking just over a year ago. Over the last several months, we've conducted a drug investigation uh, where we have suspected drug uh, dealing out of this residence belonging to Edgar Brown. That investigation gave us reason to believe uh, enough to get a search warrant. Based over the last couple months, we made several drug purchases from Edgar Brown. So that brought us here tonight to execute a search warrant, and so far in the search, uh, we're, we have found several different prescription medications. Uh, some of what we have purchased here, methadone, oxycodone, suboxone, uh, synthetic marijuana cash money so it's been a good search already so uh, it should turn out uh, hopefully one drug dealer will be back in jail. 55 year old Edgar Brown was charged with two counts of trafficking in a controlled substance, trafficking in a legend drug and tampering with physical evidence. He remains lodged in the Floyd County Detention Center. Friday, we brought you an update to the Floyd County raid story. After further investigation, an additional arrest was made. 29-year-old Bobby Murphy of Martin was charged with three counts of second-degree trafficking in a controlled substance and was lodged in the Floyd County Detention Center. 
The Eric C. Kahn saga continued this week as Floyd County Circuit Judge Johnny Ray Harris heard arguments from Kahn's malpractice insurer and Prestonsburg attorney Ned Pillersdorf regarding whether or not the insurer would be forced to pay former clients of Kahn's the amount of the policy, $1.5 million. The insurer has argued that the policy does not cover criminal activities, but Monday made argument regarding the time frame from which they began coverage for Kahn and when Kahn's medical documents for the clients were either lost or destroyed. It's pretty clear from the testimony today is we don't know when Kahn either destroyed or lost records. We do know in 2015 when the policy was in effect, hundreds of people descended on our office and were unable to get files. We don't know when Kahn's office lost her records. The testimony was clear that when Kahn learned he was in investigation, he became unstable, his office became chaotic, and he simply lost people's medical records. Mr. Kahn may not have given a damn, but it's caused a lot of people to lose their benefits. And losing clients' records, in my view, that's straight old legal malpractice. That's why lawyers pay premiums. We lose records, and that's why we buy malpractice insurance. It's clear at some point Kahn either destroyed or lost lots of people's records, and many people tragically lost their benefits. Not that they were not disabled, but that Kahn lost their medical records, so these people lost their hearings. Judge Harris is expected to make a determination in two to three weeks. After a week of testimony, the jury did not have a say in the murder trial of Ronald and Loretta Wright after the couple entered guilty pleas Tuesday. EKB's Shelby Steele covered the trial and has more. It was an emotional day in Floyd Circuit Court today as the Ronald and Loretta Wright murder trial wrapped up when the couple pleaded guilty. Ronald Wright pleaded guilty to murder, first degree assault, and first degree wanton endangerment in the 2013 shooting death of 54-year-old Famer Holbert. Ronald's wife Loretta pleaded guilty to facilitation of murder and assault and first degree wanton endangerment. I'm a little relieved that it's over and hopefully them two, uh, maybe not in this life, you know, they uh, punished for what they done to my brother. Friday afternoon and all day yesterday, attorneys and the judge met behind closed doors. After waiting for something to happen, the court was silent again this morning as family members and friends waited for attorneys to hand the case over to the jury. Instead, just before lunch, Ronald and Loretta Wright entered their pleas. We've had plea negotiations and things all the way through, but it's not unusual sometimes that you get to the trial and when the defendants have to be there and actually see the jury and for the first time actually hear from some people other than their family and their lawyers and things kind of saying what they want to hear, they, get, they have to hear the other side of it and it, it can be kind of a wake-up call. Ronald and Loretta Wright appeared in court for the murder of their brother-in-law, Famer Halbert. Halbert was killed at his residence on Halbert Lane in McDowell. Ronald Wright will serve a 25-year sentence. He will have to serve 85% of his sentence before being eligible for parole. Loretta Wright will serve a 15-year sentence. She will serve 10 years in prison and 5 years on probation. They will both appear in court on October 26 for formal sentencing. Reporting in Prestonsburg, I'm Shelby Still for EKB News. Loretta Wright will remain free until her formal sentencing in October. Rollo Wright will remain in jail where he has been since 2013. We are learning more about the events surrounding the escape of two inmates from U.S. Penitentiary Lee back in May. Authorities are alleging the two men had at least some help from the Middle East. 37-year-old Kamal Kazah and 35-year-old Salam Mohammed walked away from a minimum security camp at the prison on May 3rd. They were recaptured in Mexico City May 23rd. An indictment handed down this week sheds new light on the case alleging Mohammed spoke by phone to an individual in Yemen. During that call, he arranged to obtain fake passports for himself and Kazaa. Both men were found carrying fake passports from Yemen and American currency when they were arrested in Mexico. They will be arraigned in U.S. District Court in Abington, August 4th. Coming up, a Kentucky State Police post in our region is honored with a safety award. We'll have the details coming up next on This Week.
Attention nurse practitioners, if you want to spend more time with the family, the perfect position is available as PMC is hiring for school nurse practitioner positions. You can work while kids are in school and be off in the summer with pay starting at over $38 an hour and an excellent benefit package. To learn more, call Allison Lovely with PMC Recruitment Services at 606-218-4915. 606-218-4915, Pikeville Medical Center, an equal opportunity employer. Drivers, start your engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome Pine Pine Raceway, Raceway. Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. Menix Dental Group can assist you with all your dental needs. They offer general dentistry, lumineers, orthodontics, TMJ, migraine, Botox therapy, and so much more. Located at 253 Hager Branch in East Point, Kentucky. Menix Dental Group is open Monday and Tuesday from 9 to 7 and Wednesday and Thursday from 9 to 5. Call 606-886-0808 to schedule an appointment today. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for 7-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast or made-to-order omelets or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rules. It was a humbling week at the Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville as several troopers received awards for their service. But officials at the post are the most proud of one particular award. EKB's Shannon Deskins explains. Eastern Kentucky is known to have some of the most dangerous roads in the state, and unfortunately, traffic crashes are common for both civilians and for law enforcement officers. But at last week's annual Kentucky State Police Award Ceremony, officials at Post 9 were surprised to find out their post had been given the 2016 KSP Safe Driving Award, which recognizes the post with the highest average number of safe driving miles between collisions. It's hard to receive this award given the the area that we cover, the five counties. Uh, You're looking at some uh, pretty treacherous roadways. Uh, A lot of times uh, at some time of of a high speed at at night, maybe even in the rain. Uh, So it's hard to avoid collisions. Every time a trooper works, his or her miles are logged. And data for those miles is tracked at KSP headquarters in Frankfort. And the number of miles traveled safely by troopers in the Post 9 area was above any other post in the state. So for the entire post with the troopers here assigned at post nine, uh, it was nearly two million miles uh, that were logged without an accessible collision. Because of the vast area that post nine covers, the five county post in southeast Kentucky has more troopers than any of the other 15 posts, making this award much more difficult to receive. Just for us to get the reward, it's, it's, it's something new for us and we're, we're pretty proud of it. Reporting from Pike County, I'm Shannon Deskins for EKB News. Residents in Pikeville may notice a change in the Pikeville Police Department next month. After an extensive week, long training program, two officers will start patrolling on bicycles. The bikes, equipment, and training classes were paid for by funds forfeited in drug cases. The city has implemented bike patrols in the past, and police are hoping that they work just as well once implemented again. We see a lot of advantage to the bike patrol coming up due to the stuff we've been having going on with the meth and all the people we're seeing on the street with it now, stuff we can ease around, not be seen as much on the bike, be more quiet. So we hope it will make a big impact on the stuff we're catching now. Officers Billy Ratliff and Russell Blankenship will train in the middle of August and the bike patrols will begin the following week. Coming up next, it's back to school time and officials in one eastern Kentucky county are making sure the kids have exactly what they need. And Michaela Colley will be in with a look back at the week in sports. It's coming up next on this week.
Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation and the number one hospital in eight specialties by U.S. News & World Report. As a result of these outstanding rankings, Mayo Clinic was named to U.S. News & World Report's prestigious honor roll. PMC is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Menix Dental Group can assist you with all your dental needs. They offer general dentistry, lumineers, orthodontics, TMJ, migraine, Botox therapy, and so much more. Located at 253 Hager Branch in East Point, Kentucky. Menix Dental Group is open Monday and Tuesday from 9 to 7 and Wednesday and Thursday from 9 to 5. Call 606-886-0808 to schedule an appointment today. The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite. The Artists Collaborative Theater, gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made-to-order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. With the summer weeks winding down and football season about six weeks away, the sports world is gearing up for another year of excitement. First up, an update on the Shelby Valley Junior League softball team who represented the state of Kentucky in the Central Regional Tournament in South Holland, Illinois. The 14 and under group was hoping to advance to the World Series, but their tournament was cut short after three games. On Saturday, the girls from Shelby Valley fell to the Wisconsin representatives from Oak Creek 8-1, but avenged that loss in the elimination round against Missouri, putting up a show, racking up 14 runs to their nine. But their run would fall short, falling in the second elimination game of the tournament to Indiana 11-2. Our congratulations goes out to the girls for advancing to the state and representing the state well. Looking ahead to the college football season, kickoff times were finalized and set for Kentucky's first three games of the season. Kentucky will kick off their season at Southern Mississippi on September 2nd with a kickoff time at 4 p.m. on the CBS Sports Network. On September 9th, Kentucky's home opener against Eastern Kentucky will kick off at 12 noon and their first SEC road game versus South Carolina will take place September 16th for their first night game at 7.30. With all the games featured on SEC Network, with all three games and the entire Kentucky football schedule being featured on the stations of EKB 93.1 WDHR with the broadcast beginning two hours prior to kickoff. Last season, the Wildcats posted a 7-6 record and a trip to a bowl game. On Tuesday at the Woodford Reserve Club at Kroger Field, head coach Mark Stoops was joined by his offensive and defensive coordinators as they talked about the upcoming year and the improvements that they have been working on since the offseason. This team's worked extremely hard. They really worked hard through the winter, carried it into spring ball, and really have had a terrific summer. I think the the biggest area where you're gonna see the improvement from this football team really is in the leadership area. This team is very mature, uh, they're physically stronger, mentally stronger, and we've seen great leadership. I, I really have an opportunity to have a special year, um, you know, in particular. The whole secondary has grown and improved. We're, we're excited to see their continued in development. You know, and I think a guy like Mike Edwards has become more vocal which is a good thing. For us, <coughs> execution is the biggest thing for us. Offense is about executing, and we've got to be more consistent, as Coach talked about earlier. Uh, and then turnovers. We've got to make sure that we take care of the ball. That's our program. We did a great job this spring. Uh, everybody's on top of that, and that's something we'll be stressing. Uh, uh, I said it once. I've said it 100 times since I've been here. We're all in this together. We need all of you. We need your support. We greatly appreciate it. Second thing is our staff. I want to thank them.
That will do it for sports. Stick with us. More news from this week is coming up after this. Attention nurse practitioners, if you want to spend more time with the family, the perfect position is available as PMC is hiring for school nurse practitioner positions. You can work while kids are in school and be off in the summer with pay starting at over $38 an hour and an excellent benefit package. To learn more, call Allison Lovely with PMC Recruitment Services at 606-218-4915. 606-218-4915, Pikeville Medical Center, an equal opportunity employer. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite. The Artists Collaborative Theater, gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made-to-order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rules. There's a musical tradition here unlike anywhere else in America. During this week, we shine a light on part of that musical tradition. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy our mountain music. It's time now for Mountain Music, brought to you by McGuire's Brick House in Prestonsburg. We've been married 36 years, so I know we've played music together at least that long, but as a band. For about, about 16 years. Uh, he finishes my sentences most of the time, and uh, says he knows what I'm thinking, but I don't know. Fire flowing We describe ourselves as Appalachian rock. Um, it's been, you know, we've got David, who's like this incredible guitar player. But we're both products of the 70s. And I was, oh, a, you know, I was a, big, a big guitar guy, and she was listening to a lot of AM radio and a lot of hits of the day. Mm -hmm. And so you got a little hillbilly girl that sings like Stevie Nicks, and I'm trying to be Jimmy Page on the guitar. <laughs> That's how we sound the way we do. <laughs> I was backstage at a 
uh, Kentucky Headhunters concert. And I saw this older man sitting there and he had caught a lightning bug and he pulled it apart. And I went, oh, all these memories come back of me. I did that, I did that when I was little. And I just put him on my arm there, simple little chart, uh, glow in the dark um, jewelry from lightning bugs. And, and you know, I feel very badly about that now. But, uh, but I wrote that song as an apology. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on this week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the Mayo model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine! Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome, Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made to order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. The Southeast Chamber of Commerce 60th Annual Awards Banquet Dinner will be Thursday, August 17th at 6 p.m. at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. This year's banquet will feature entertainment by a local favorite. The Artists Collaborative Theater. Gluten-free and vegetarian meals are available by request prior to the dinner. If you're interested in attending the Awards Banquet Dinner, contact the Chamber Office at 606-432-5504 or visit sekchamber.com. Here are some events that you may be interested in this upcoming week. The Elkhorn City Night Market will be held Friday, August 4th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Artist Collaborative Theater. The evening will be marked with shopping, music, food, and much, much more. For more information, you can email the address listed on your screen. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6.30 p.m. right here on EKB TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.